Hello, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at Plugin Doctor 2 from DDMF. DDMF emailed me earlier to let me know that the new version had been released and that the major addition to this new version is a new plugin which acts as a plugin host which actually allows you to load it up within your DAW and then you can actually hear what it's doing as well as see a visual representation of what the EQ curve or the dynamic section or the harmonic section is actually doing. So it's quite a significant update and also it was a free update. The software itself isn't that expensive either. So I think it's worth picking up if you're curious about what plugins are actually doing and if you want to be able to compare plugins. So you can actually load up two different versions of a plugin. So if I click on this little library icon and fair warning, it hasn't been particularly stable for me. I've tried loading in plugins and it's completely crashed Cubase. I've tried closing plugins, it's crashed Cubase. So yeah, I think I've maybe had about five crashes in about an hour. So not very stable, if I'm being honest. Interestingly, it's not detecting all of the VST3 versions of plugins that I have. So in order to test out this Pultec EQP1A, I'm actually having to run the audio unit version. So it acts as a plugin wrapper for the audio unit version, which is kind of cool. And then if I load up the second plugin, I'll go for the Waves Boog Tech. It's a little bit slow in the sort of library scan as well, I've noticed. So I'll load up the VST version of that. And we'll get them set up to the same. So 60, 60, 8, 8, 10, and 10. So what I found is, unfortunately, these Waves plugins, the interface is very laggy on them. I think that might be because I'm running Big Sur and I haven't paid for Waves update plan since version, well, I've never paid for it. So once it ran out, it ran out like at version 10 and it, they've never been updated from then. So they probably just are not, they're never going to run that well, unfortunately, which is why I no longer buy Waves plugins. Whereas this isn't even a VST plugin running inside of a host and it's smooth as butter, whereas this one's like, weird, janky behavior. So anyway, if I boost at around three and a half and then I cut at around two and I do the same with the waves version. In the old version, the standalone version of Plugin Doctor, this is what you would see. You wouldn't really hear anything, you would just see the visual representation. But now, if I hit play here, I can actually hear what it's doing. So at the minute, it's playing the UAD2 version, or UADX version, sorry. And that's the Waves version. There's a fair bit of a difference there in the levels, just sort of up to about 200 hertz. Then you start to see a dip down to around sort of 2.5 kilohertz on the UAD version. The Waves version doesn't seem to dip as much. If I boost the high frequencies here, I attenuate them as well. And then I'll do the same settings. The UAD version just wins on how smooth it is to dial in, whereas the, the Waves one, just the user interface is very, very laggy.
definitely here with the Weaves version, it's not as scooped here. So it has a bit more presence around 2000 Hertz, but the UAD version just sounds a lot more smooth to me. Let's try the bandwidth. So you can see that the bandwidth is just rolling off that peak. So yeah, I think a really cool update, great that it's free, I hope that they can improve the stability of it because it has caused about 5 crashes in the last hour, completely crashed Cubase just to the desktop, so yeah, and there also are a few plugins when you load them in, they don't actually don't seem to do anything, which is disappointing because they're ones that I would actually like to be able to see exactly what they're doing. This might crash Cubase here again. So when I'm adjusting this, it's not doing anything in terms of the plugin doctor, but if I, if I bring these all back, you can clearly hear that it is doing stuff. When I roll those all off, it's like a an extreme high pass filter. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Though in the standalone version, none of the master and the mix plugins worked. Mixroom doesn't either, and it actually caused the crash previously. So I'll try and replicate that crash and see if it, it happens again. Again, it's quite laggy. And a bit unresponsive. Again. Here that it's doing stuff, but nothing's happening in Plugin Doctor. And then when I closed that one out before, is when it crashed. But it seems to be okay that time. It might have been the VST3 version. So Definitely an interesting plugin and an interesting piece of software in general, but it's also not the most stable piece of software. So if you're loading it within your DAW, definitely save often and uh, bear that in mind. Also that it's not detecting all of the VST3 plugins for whatever reason. And then you're having to load in the audio unit versions. But the fact that it can load in audio unit plugins is actually pretty cool. Um, so it works as a sort of plugin wrapper. I think it actually might be able to oversample plugins as well from within it. So, yeah.
you've got up to 16 times over sampler. Um, I'm not sure if that's just forced, if you can actually force over sampling on plugins that don't include over sampling. But that could be useful in and of itself. But yeah, I'll leave a link below. And if you're interested in this, check it out. But do bear in mind that it does have some stability issues and uh, could be hit and miss sometimes as well with the plugins themselves that like uh, the master in the mix stuff. I don't know why it's not not working. Yeah, your mileage may vary, but it is definitely an interesting piece of software and not that expensive. So yeah, you might find it interesting. Okay, so I will be back with more videos soon and hopefully you find this one helpful. Cheers.